Hey guys, welcome in. <laughs> and her husband, Afe Chimba's song from the album Quo. Did I say that right? Yeah. Yes. And yeah. this is Amari, Amariri. Is that correct? Yeah. It's a play yes. on And it means, well, it's like a mix between love and death. Amor and greed. Mm, mm, that's so beautiful. Thank you, everybody who's here for the first keynote live. So as you know, Keynotes is a lot of things. Keynotes is a play on my, my name, Kiera, Key, and the way that I write, so my notes. Um, but it's also about Keynote speakers. And so I am so thrilled, humbled, and honored to have my friend, my sister, who is also a mystic teacher and an artist, to talk to us about unlocking the dream world. Oh. I'm so, <laughs> so hyped to talk to you about this. I'm so hyped that keynotes unlocking the dreams, like it just all weaves so perfectly together. I'm getting smoked out by Michael Bell. <laughs> <laughs> that means it's going, the good vibes are going. <laughs> right. There's actually this quote by a author and the creator of the Gene Keys. He says, life is not meant to be solved, but it is meant to be unlocked bit by bit. And mm. I thought of that, where you, the name for your series was Unlocking, because that's what it feels, and very much like dreams, that's part of what they're helping with, is the unlocking, the deepening in life. Though we're not here to get all the answers and have everything figured out, because that's not the point. <laughs> right, right. Unlocking, like click, 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 when you're turning a key. Love that. So we're going to do a Q&A first, guys. And then if you have any questions about dreams, make sure that you include them in the comments. I believe at the bottom, there's a little question box. So we'll see those. Um, Danielle is saying, hi, everyone. Hi, Kiera. Hi, Ebian. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. Danielle, you're so welcome. I see my mama's in the house. Hey, mama. <laughs> a lot of people are here. Um, hey, Sade. Hey, Kennedy. Hey, Idol. So many. All right, so first, from a spiritual standpoint, Ebian, what are dreams? So, you know, this question in general, it's, it's one that really, it's important, and at the same time, it's a mystery. <laughs> there's, there's a scientific perspective around dreams, which I'm not going to go deeply into because I'm, I'm much more interested in indigenous perspective. However, it's so interesting that it's one of the only fields of science where they admit that it's a mystery. And wow. that's so much that can't necessarily be figured out about what is happening to the being and to the brain during sleep. So generally what happens when can't figure it out through the logical mind as people turn towards mysticism and are open to it in a way. And for many indigenous cultures, they see dreams as a sacred tool, mm. actually a sacred place even beyond a sacred tool. So a sacred place that we go for learning, for revelation, for connection. And like the aboriginals in Australia call it the dream time, which is and essentially an entire 
like an entire world that opens to us when we close our eyes and leave this one. Mm. Yeah. And I love the me. distinction between it being a, a place versus just a different realm of consciousness. That's so interesting. And there's so many ways to look at it because at the same time, I could say it also feels like things are messages, right? Like almost like a postal service from higher intelligence and also like the part of us that's, that's just, sometimes it's higher intelligence and sometimes it's just getting real. It's like digging into what we might not be willing to, to, to look at, to handle, or even just don't feel safe bringing forward in the waking world. So when we close our eyes, we listen to the subconscious goes like, whoosh, <laughs> disappears. When we feel safe, which is an important part about dreaming, if you don't feel safe in your surroundings, if you don't have a, a, like a sanctuary, a calm, restful space, dreams become very difficult to work with as a tool. But when that's happening, the dream world is a place where there's no resistance, kind of like what alcohol does, like it drops inhibition, so the truth comes up. <laughs> ah, yeah. That's a really, really good analogy. It's um, like truth serum for your brain. And I guess when you're awake, there's so many um, sensory things firing off that you can't actually, but when you're laying in bed, everything's shut off. Wow, that's so interesting. That makes so a lot of sense. Right, and it's even like sometimes a simulation where you're able to play out or process out what is difficult to understand and process as a human in the waking world. And it's not like, like this is kind of a high stakes game on many <laughs> levels. So I can't just go experimenting all the time every possible outcome in the human world. Mm -hmm. If in this other realm, something similar pops up in symbolic language, we are able to explore different avenues like you know, exploring, and this is, this is one of the tools we can go into later, but I think one of the best way to work with dreams, rather than like, let's say controlling our dreams and saying, I want to <laughs> fly with Superman. Yeah. Like, but to enter them both with a curiosity, so being willing to learn from it, and at the same time, know that you are part of a co-creation so that you can try things. If you're having dreams that repeat, that are uncomfortable, lucid dreaming does help to come and bring like a moment of clarity where you say all right i'm tired of this there's panthers chasing me and i'm just gonna turn the fuck around am i allowed to click here sorry yes <laughs> of course <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah wow okay so for some people they may like wake up from a dream and they're just like whatever you know i'm moving on that was just my brain emptying out information for people who may be a little skeptical, why do you think it's important to pay attention to all of your dreams? Yeah, absolutely. And it's also important to know, like even someone like myself felt that for a long time and came from that perspective. And it's, it's often um, almost programmed in society, like, oh, it's just a dream. First of all, though your body doesn't experience it, your mind is literally processing as though it's a real event. Hmm. So been registered as a memory everything that we live from the amazing dreams that feel really good to the dream traumatizing so they're not things that are just like you know to be thrown off as though it was nothing you really and if, if anyone has had really serious nightmares for example you know that feeling mm. if somebody tells you like oh it's just a dream let it go like it doesn't feel that way it actually really hurts and it, mm. it, it alleviates um this sort of tension and eviction of something that's very human it's a part of us naturally when we instead dive into them both the good stuff and the uncomfortable stuff um and there's many many reasons of like what benefits let's say working with dreams have one of them which i've experienced for example is it can alert you to illness this is like a very <laughs> a kind of simple one but it's, it's deep really so in the Amazon, I was there doing an apprenticeship for like four months. And around like month two, I started to get, you know, comfortable and a little radical. I took off my shoes and I was like, I'm not wearing shoes anymore. And this is the Amazon rainforest. Ooh, girl. <laughs> that went well for like two and a half months. <laughs> around like month three, I started to get like some, some signs of like something's not right, but I didn't know what there was, I wasn't, it wasn't obvious. It was just like fatigue, sometimes having like a fever. And in my dream, I woke up 
I don't know what, even remember what it was that I was dreaming, but my dream essentially like propelled me to push my toe against the end of my bed so that I could feel this pricking pain that was from the bottom of my toe to all through my body. And I looked at my toe after this dream and I saw a black dot. And I was like, well, that's weird. I never had a freckle there before. <laughs> and I went to the doctor, this is a little graphic, but I went to the doctor. Inside was a tiny little insect burrowed that had made a home in me. And that if I had not caught it in that moment would start to lay eggs and really create serious trouble where people amputate like your feet there, you know, wow. well, and it enters through your, through your feet. So it was a very, very like um, direct kind of communication that allowed me to act upon, you know, something I was yeah. totally, I didn't even know that was a thing. Though obviously I thought the dangers were stepping on an ant's nest or beyond this, like there are dreams some of the most rewarding dreams are the dreams that bring us insight and tools, like specific insight and tools to our life. So, for example, I had a dream in, in a few months ago where we're at a wedding. It's a Somali wedding. My heritage is Somali. And my aunties are preparing this one little cousin to sing and open the wedding with a traditional Somali song. So this little cousin, she's a little cousin of mine is just messing everything up. <laughs> She's messing up all the words. <laughs> and it's a big deal. It's like, you know, not a royal wedding, but it has that feeling of like, it's a big deal in front of the whole community. And I'm already like, guys, it's too close to the, to the hour. We gotta find somebody else. We gotta check another cousin who, who can actually do this properly. But my aunties are not failed, are not phased. And they instead gather around together, the little girl in front of them, and they start to sing, moving rhythmically their arms. So mm -hmm. I don't remember the exact song, but something like, And so by doing these movements with the song, it was like she was starting to get out of it, trying to remember it. Mm -hmm. And it began to enter her beyond the intellect. Wow. In one form, they're transmitting it, literally with their movements, giving her the song, giving her the wisdom. But on another level, it was, t it was, it was showing me the power of education that goes beyond just the mind. Some of the mind is necessary, right? To be able to say words, to be able to remember in the future. But at the same time, when something enters you in that sort of deeper level, it's a learning that's not so common in, you know, in school, for example. Yeah, yeah. So I want to talk about interpreting a little bit because we had a conversation earlier about a dream I had before I took a big life leap um, into the world of working independently. And so before I made that decision, I had this dream that I was basically being terrorized by aliens. Okay, y'all. So in the dream, aliens had landed on the earth and I was the only person trying to fight off the aliens. I was negotiating with the aliens. I was acting as an ambassador for humanity. I was trying to talk to them, but I was also fighting them and nobody else wanted to fight the aliens but me. So I woke up from that dream and that's actually the last dream that I remember having. And I woke up and looking back on it, I thought at first, okay, was that dream telling me that I made the wrong decision? You know, what, what was that dream trying to communicate with me? So I talked to Ebian about it and she had a totally different interpretation. So I'd love to know your interpretation and then for you to talk about why sometimes we need someone else to interpret our dreams. Right. So, okay. It's just, it's so beautiful. I love this stuff so much. The, the <laughs> issue, right? When you're the dreamer and this happens to me and I've been trying to understand this world for like, years and years. So when you are the dreamer, you are processing what is unresolved, uncomfortable, and even maybe blocked in your psyche. So when you're then trying to be the mirror to help like draw the wisdom forward, it becomes very difficult because you have, each of us have our own um, blind spots, let's say. So we will more, more often than not go towards the comfort zone, go towards a way of thinking that 
formally do, not the new one, not the future, not where we're going. Mm. So this is what helps to have either like someone for a while who helps guide you or also to have that and then to learn yourself how to turn the mirror around and to step away from what is the most easeful manner of looking at something for us, let's say, or yeah. obvious, or obvious. So can you say that metaphor that you gave me earlier about the, the knife? Alan Watts um, talks about it as when like a knife, it's like a knife trying to cut itself. It doesn't work unless through time, someone begins to evolve and curve the knife back towards itself. So that's what we're learning to do is to curve the knife towards us. And that's what, why it helps to have guides, teachers, friends maybe who are interested in this and who are able to come from a neutral place and also not project their own thing, which is even hard for me sometimes. If I have an idea of your life and what I think you should be doing and you talk to me about a dream, I have to go like out, shoot, and listen to the dream. You know? mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. The and aliens. Or, I'm going to say oh, aliens. Go ahead. <laughs> so, aliens. You know, if I, if I, when I heard that, it was like, okay, so I hear what you feel, but knowing that like, okay, that's, that's Kiara's like way of thinking in the norm, in the normal plane. But if I look at the dream and the as other aspects in the dream, what are aliens actually? Aliens are out of this world, but still natural in some way. And they are the unknown, the foreign, like literally the most foreign. So what happens when aliens invade our territory? <laughs> they are strange, unknown forces entering our comfort and our known place. And a natural reaction would be like, everybody out. What are you yeah. doing on my planet? <laughs> Gone. Yeah. And it's even often seen in a lot of, I mean, movies. I mean, there's some that aren't obviously like E.T. and blah, 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 But it's interesting because sometimes movies can show us like, cultural blind spots and sometimes they can illuminate the truth like movies about zombies zombies are generally the same in, in the sense that like you know a zombie in most people's consciousness represents resurrection of something that is not meant to be alive and is not here to do you good because it's not natural mm -hmm. so on the side of aliens and in this in this moment like in your alien life, attack dream <laughs> right so like your natural way of handling it was like fight them off but the dream if you were actually meant to fight them off the other people around you would have been able to do it and they would have helped you but they're not caring and you're still like guys what the hell aliens out of here and this and, and and i know this from experience because when i leave a dream and i share it to my teacher especially like some of the more like complex ones I think that what I'm thinking in the dream is correct. And I, I, I've got it. I've figured it out. And I'm like, I don't understand why this was, you know, why, why this policeman was trying to tell me that he was on my side when I know he's not on my side. And in my, in, this is a true story. In one of my dreams, this policeman kept coming to try to help me. And I was like, mm-hmm, sure. Okay. Of course, being a person of color, Police don't hold a very beautiful place in our psyche. But in the dream world, it was actually little by little showing me trust and discern the difference between authority figures that are actually here to help and authority figures that are here to corrupt and do the opposite. Yeah. Preparation. So, I love that. On, I'm going to get into what was going on. I'm going to get into some of the comments. Oh, go ahead. Say that again. What was going on with your alien dream in your life? You forgot to add that part. Oh, what was going on in my life at the time of my alien dream? Oh, I was making a transition into working independently for myself. And so even though in my dream, I was being terrorized by this unknown and felt like helpless in this unknown, it was actually, now that I understand the interpretation, it was actually helping me to navigate the unknown by myself. And the aliens weren't an enemy. As you said, they just represented something beyond this. 
And of course, this new world that I was entering in is new for me. It's beyond what I know. Um, so I thank you for curving the knife back to me. Um, I'm going to get into some of these questions. Danielle said, is it better to have a stranger interpret a dream you are having trouble understanding versus someone you know? Um, so I think Dan um, Evian answered that a little bit earlier that um, someone who studied this and, and, and knows about it, it's better for them to give you an interpretation because your, your mind is going to think consciously before it goes into the, con the subconscious layers that it's actually speaking in, right? Did I say that correctly? Absolutely. I think she might also be asking about, for example, friends. Like, would it be better to go to a troll figure? Like, you would go to a psychologist versus going to a girlfriend, you know? Oh. Which is an interesting question. Um, the, the reason it's difficult for me to say clearly yes or no is that it, it depends sort of on the state of the friend. If the friend can truly be neutral, but they do have an idea of your life, it may help. However, if the friend is coming, like I was saying before, with their projection of what they think is the way for you, then the dream gets all even more muddled, you know? So that really depends on, on the circle that you have around you and choosing. Um, I, I'm gonna read the comment she just wrote. I come from a family of dreamers who dream things that happened, et cetera, that happen, et cetera. Yeah. So, um, I mean, so I wonder if it's best to have them interpret since they know me so well. That's what she said. Yeah, mm. yeah absolutely. And I, I still would say whether it's family or not, whether they have power in their own dreams, it's really actually about the person being able to take themselves out of the picture mm. and read from a neutral place and also mm. work with, with you and, and, and just not not bring my ideas upon you, you know. Mm -hmm. Like when I when I when I studied this, a big part of the study is to come with intuition and to learn how to come with intuition, to learn how to come with some also understanding of collective symbolism, like the symbolism that's in our culture in movies that may have imprinted on each of us. But really, it's also been about take your ideas out and listen to the clues in the dream. Mm. I love that. Tracy said, what's the difference in, pot in potency between a dream and a daydream? Hmm. I love this question. Um, generally, the, so potency is a weird word. Potency, I would, I would lean towards the subconscious is where like there is way more power of like imprinting and cha literally changing the way you think um, from one dream or from one hypno session, from, for example, which is where you are able to penetrate the subconscious, though you're not technically asleep, like your life and your way of thinking can change entirely. Daydreaming is also incredibly powerful because it's you allowing yourself to enter into a more imaginative state. You're also able to influence it yourself. And through repetition of daydreaming, you can affect the dreams in your subconscious. Let me repeat that. Mm. It's, it's an empowering thing. If I have a dream that I don't, I'm not able to, to go beyond and it, like, I'm just doing the same thing and the same thing again and again in the dream. And I start daydreaming about other possibilities regularly. It gives me the power literally because at some point repetition does penetrate the subconscious. And then mm. you're able to liberate. That was really deep. The, there's a visual often seen about like if this is the horizon of the water this is our conscious mind and then this huge iceberg like the tip is the conscious mind and this huge giant part of the iceberg under is the subconscious mind mm. that is a really good explanation between the two um leticia says what does it mean if you have the same dream often if you're in a specific place often within a dream okay oh interesting yeah, specific place may be different than specific theme in your dream. So a recurring dream is when you have a specific theme. And that's something that can come up exactly the same every time, or it can have like a little bit of a twist, or it can change places or change people, but the same actions or themes are coming up. Whether that's someone's chasing you. Um, I can talk about when we get into nightmares, a recurring dream of mine that, that is one of the biggest liberating uh, things in my life. Um, recurring dreams are essentially just signals saying, 
pay attention to this, pay attention to this, pay attention to this. So that's why they won't go. <laughs> it's important, mm -hmm. whatever it is. It can be really like difficult and panicky in some ways. It can be a nightmare or sometimes recurring or not nightmares. They just are happening again and again, but without that intense emotion that nightmares bring. However, they are, they are little flashes saying, over here, come take a look, yeah. come take a look. Yeah. And just to add um, to what Leticia was asking, and let me know if this is correct. So if she was in the same place over and over again in the dream. You know, the conscious mind might, might be like, I need to go visit that place or I need to go back to that place. Whereas if you go deeper, it's, well, who were you in that place? How were you thinking? Right. You know, what were, you know, is that, okay. Right. And the same place could have many, I mean, if, if the dream is really about the place, let's say you're, it's your childhood home. She said an old apartment. Yeah. So then it would be that there's an energy there that you are working through, transmuting, and it's taking you to your next evolution. If it's just like, for example, I have, I have many people who, who like report back similar landscapes or a place that is common that they will go back to visit in their dreams. And that's just part of like the, the many I do that. places we have. Yeah. yeah, I do that. I go to a specific place. I just call it like my happy place. And it's literally up the mountain near my old high school and it's to the back. And there's suddenly a waterfall there that wasn't there. And then when I go past, there's like a yacht that is waiting there like a white yacht and when i go on the white yacht it's just like a big party for me and yeah. that's a place that i repeatedly <laughs> go to i haven't gone in so long but when i go there i'm like yeah i'm back in the place i'm back there and this is also like an another word for this type of place would be an inner sanctuary so mm -hmm. like you can go to that place in meditation or in daydreaming um that it's one of your power places too in your psyche, you know? So going there in moments of high stress or, or just in a moment that you have free time and you're like, Netflix, whatever. <laughs> and you just go there and you let your mind discover, speak, um, call in a guide, call in animal spirits to, to, to explore this place because it's an inner sanctuary. Mm, I love that. Um, I'm going to, let's see, Tracy said, if dreams are saying, come take a look, then are nightmares saying, run away? Ooh, great question. So can we leave that for five minutes? Because I think nightmares will open up. Like that's our next topic. Okay. But okay. just Val, Homewood daughter, Val wrote right above her. Why do you wake from a dream and fall back to sleep in the same dream, especially when you don't want to be in that dream? So this is, an, this is a, a good segue into like nightmares. So, okay. Dreams are the majority of the time not comfortable places though so sometimes you know like you are flying or you are you see a, a whale come kiss you and, and you are exploring but the majority of the time they are uncomfortable so intuitively Val if you are waking up from the dream and you fall back to sleep in the same dream I think that you know that you don't really have a choice some part of you knows that you have to go there and you have to be there and it's important that you're there. So mm -hmm. some other part of you is like resisting it obviously because it's not comfortable. I don't know what the situation may be, but the chances are that, and it's like this in life, if we are, if we are willing to release resistance when really like spirit is just one and again, just telling us, you know, surrender, <laughs> surrender. come with me, come here. There's something good here. There's something juicy here like it will unlock. <laughs> wow, it's, I love I love that because um, I guess, especially when you're stuck in a nightmare and you keep going back to it, it's important, even in all that fear you're shaking to remember you're co-creating. You're not being victimized by this dream. Right, you are equally learning as you are. So that's, that's the difference and, and I, I want to say that this is a more tribal way and also it's a more feminine way of, of looking at the world and also working with spirit, which is we are neither victims nor are we dictators. Mm. We are in balance of control and surrender. So listening and learning is equally as important as empowering us, empowered action and exploration, you know? Mm. 
Yes. Um, and I'd love to talk about the nightmares now because it is, it's a deep one. Yes. Yes. Let's talk about it. You can start. I'm just going to close my window, but I'm here if I disappear for a second. <laughs> So Let's talk about saying, nightmares. Yes, good. So if dreams are saying, come take a look, at nightmares saying, run away. So in short, thank you for this wonderful question. The answer is no. Um, dreams are dreams, all of them, uncomfortable ones and beautiful radiant ones, are come and take a look. And I was saying this, I remember uh, with you earlier, Key, that when we get to this part about nightmares, I want to acknowledge something that I wouldn't have been able to talk about a few years ago, which is unless you really experience nightmares and the depths of like pain <laughs> that one goes through, normally prolonged over many months or a year, depending on the, the chapter of your life, like it's not something where I can just come and say, oh yeah, there's teachings there, you know, don't worry, you'll make it through. It, it, that's true, but it really is. Tra traumatic um and so though i am saying it's not run away it's come towards it it's learn and explore and don't be afraid because you have all of the tools that you need and whatever it is you need to to um like refine or understand in order to unlock this dream it will come to you we mm -hmm. often want to have everything figured out right now I, I know I do, <laughs> and it's a pressure, really, external pressure, something that, that we have to subscribe to anymore. And it's something, for example, like, I think for the next generations, many of us are feeling like, even as a young age, we're told, know what you want to do, like, yeah. you know, then rock it and kill it and da da da. And, and there's room for the parts and the moments of life where we don't know what the heck is going on. And it just sucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So allowing that uncomfortable space is generally a really powerful part of our evolution. Um, and, and I know that it's easier said than done. However, I would encourage that in those, in those moments or those chapters of life to really see if we can learn just even this much more to be at, at peace with being in the uncomfortable muck of life. Yeah. Which is like... Um, Super and fitting that you're saying that because <laughs> we're, of course, globally really uncomfortable right now. And we're so uncomfortable that you all the time that you wonder why it's not emphasized more that you're going to be uncomfortable. Like, I just don't remember anyone instilling in me, like, just so you know, yeah. life's going to be really uncomfortable. And so here we are in these dreams that even the nightmares are like teaching us how to navigate how to be prepared for the discomfort or or how to be prepared to navigate this thing and we wake up and we're just like so angry about it or so hurt by it where it really is all just navigation and learning Absolutely. i love that um let's see i and think i, I missed it um, i'd love to question. share a specific antidote around nightmares that may help okay. over the course of like a year and a half recently, I was suffering from nightmares that were, well, they were nightmares recurring dreams, right? So they would come again, but they were not in the exact same form every time. So sometimes it would come in the form of a mafioso, like some mafia man, doesn't have to be Italian, just that power with minions all over the world, doesn't matter where the heck you are, who is corrupt, and who is always after me. So imagine feeling like one tiny little ant compared to the, the power of the mafia all around you in every corner. And so that would show up in many different ways. Sometimes he, he would be an African dictator um, and I was being chased by, by, you know, like that scene of the man in the militia. In the, in yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. The skinny and the, and the bandanas and everything. And I mean, years upon years, and, and it, it, sometimes it got a little more creative. It was an evil wizard, but he still had way more power than what I had. Mm -hmm. And after me, and, and sometimes I would learn little, little things and have like mini successes, but they weren't really successes. And it was always frightening, traumatic. And I'd wake up and I'd tell my partner, like, what the hell? 
is, <laughs> is wrong with you, girl? And, and again, this is something that only the person like living it maybe can understand it. And someone who, who's, let's say, empathetic or works with dreams will look at that and, and, and be able to meet it. Otherwise, you just, you're like, why are you dreaming of a of mad sorcerer? Huh, this was one where he, he was, there was an event and there was the workers and I, I, the, I saw the worker displeased with one of the orders he was given from, from the leader. And so I, I turned and I looked around and I turned to him and I was like, you know what? If you guys don't like this leader and you don't like his values, you don't like what he's, you don't respect him, why are you following him and doing what he tells you? So in this moment, the man just kind of looks at me and an entire like swarm of men come, grab me and begin to stick me into a, a hole in the earth where they have put a box about the size of you know, this, exactly the form of a human body with spikes and they close me in the box. And as, I, as this, the, the lid of the box is closing around and all I see is darkness. And I have my only friend who was at the event and I tell him, I'm like, please tell, tell my husband that I love him, that they're putting me in this box and I'm gonna be okay. And then mm -hmm. boom, darkness. So how did, so how did in this, they interpret it? Yeah. So in this moment, and I didn't have access to my teacher any, like all the time. I haven't always had someone to interpret my dreams and I haven't always been able to. But when I have, my teacher has, has helped me. And one of the things she told me about the, the, like the gravity of these dreams was that they are ancestral. They are ancestral, they are ancestral. Until at some point I realized and I had a revelation, my grandfather, rest his soul, <laughs> like beautiful man, my Somali grandfather, he, he was a, a hero and, and a man of integrity and a government official in Somalia who helped bring Somalia out of colonialism peacefully from the Italians established his first government, which unfortunately ended up turning into a dictatorship. And this mm -hmm. dictatorship, this dictator, after years of service that my, as an official, incarcerated my grand, grandfather because he spoke out against the secret police that are putting people in jail for more than 72 hours without telling them what their crimes are, that are torturing people out of suspicions and hearsay. And so he, he gave a speech knowing the, the questions and the dictator put my grandfather in jail in solitary confinement for seven years. Yeah. So for how did he for speaking what is a basic human right? And how does this relate? So mm -hmm. when I had this revelation, the dream still kept coming, but I did feel a liberation understanding. One, this is not my own. This is the same force my grandfather fought his life, you know, to, to, to eliminate and also feeling the power, despite being a good man, what he had suffered, and everything that, you know, the tragedy that also happened from Somalia after this dictatorship. Wow. So this leads me to months later to the resolution and the resolution is quick. It's not something that came in a dream. It's not something that I can exactly figure out when it happened. But at some point, I realized my grandfather has a book that is unpublished. And it's, his, it's been his dying wish. His last breath was two things. He told his, his children, 13 of them, you must live together because you will die. You are a tribe if you don't live together. And please publish my book. His book is his autobiography. Everything he suffered for everything that he, that he saw in Somalia that was beautiful about it instead of only what's told nowadays. And so this book has been collecting dust and I started to dedicate, which is when we met in, in uh, the summer, I dedicated that time to my grandfather's book. And around that moment, I had a dream with a dictator, mafia man, who was in this time with a big poster behind him of his face. And the, whole army and he were in panic 
because they had lost a battle. And it was like that very, when it was a small man, but very egoic, and he was so angry that he had lost the battle, he couldn't believe it. And so it was like the anger when you lose your cool entirely. And you could see him like going around and yelling at his generals and all the army was there just stone faced. And then, you know, he was trying to figure out what to do. And somehow, one by one, came to the decision and one by one, each of the soldiers killed themselves until mm -hmm. it came to the doctor. He killed himself. And I have not had a dream about a mafioso, a, a dictator, militia man of Africa, or a wizard, yeah. evil or witch since then. Wow. Some wow. I like that you point out that the resolution can come months later, um, which is why it's important to keep a dream journal. Um, before we go into that, I'm going to get a couple more questions. Val said, is anyone else experiencing even more vivid dreams since quarantine? I seem to be. Um, I've definitely been hearing that. Um, not me particularly, but I do think um, there's a collective energy, collective consciousness that's happening that because our reality <laughs> is so confused and distorted right now i feel like our subconscious is sending us messages on how to cope deal or what we need to be coping and dealing with while we're in this state of being so if the dreams are more vi vivid that means that our subconscious is trying to be super loud listen 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 to me because during the day you're so traumatized by everything that's around you that you you can't hear me um so i definitely think that that's the transfer that's going on. Um, Amber said, how do you feel about taking herbs for dreaming like mugwort? Hmm. So great question. Um, also just one thing about the vivid dreams now, it's also because we're all more still, which helps. It's one of the things that I would have, I was going to talk about when we get to how to remember dreams, stillness, mm -hmm. life, mm -hmm. quiet before bed, like it is literally one of the most important ways to remember your dream um and on amber's take about dream herbs well i love mugwort i love 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 mugwort everyone have a different chemistry that works better with different plants this is this is one that i would say walk with caution because we think that plants because they're just plants <laughs> just plants are no big deal and just, you know, I'm, I'm interested in so boom, I smoke this and I smoke that and I buy it on Amazon. And like, these are a powerful being. So one, they should be right, like greeted with respect, but two, each of them have their own personality. Some, some dream herbs actually help heal. So not only will they help make your dreams more vivid, they help heal in your dreams like an extra ally. Then there are other dreams that help you to so sometimes if you're not really prepared or if you're in a really dark period of your life and all you're doing is seeing more vividly, that's not helpful. Mm. So mugwort is a really beautiful one because it is both a healing plant and mm. it's uh, um, like a memory enhancer and, and makes like dreams much more vivid. And I've experienced many times on mugwort prophetic dreams that then came true, dreaming of someone mm. and they call me the next day who I haven't spoken to in six years, like many things like this with mugwort in particular. With Another mugwort. plant for those who are interested like mugwort is yarrow, which is a plant used by the Native Americans. And another one that is a, a healer, different energy than mugwort, a healer and one that helps make your dreams more um, accessible. Yes. Um, we have about 15 minutes to go, but while everyone's here, I also want to make it clear that Ebian does dream interpretation. So can you just tell them while everybody's here just a little bit about where they can find you if they have more specific questions and want you to interpret their dreams? Yeah, for sure. So if we don't get to dream interpretation in this live, it's okay, we, we, we can do another one and also you can come and reach out to me. Um, and I also work like on a, a policy where if you're not able to pay and especially if you are of indigenous background or a person of color please please reach out if you can pay five dollars if you can pay ten dollars because i know that like like my teacher told me once the most important form of payment is the awakening of a soul mm. we all need to eat but but i do want to offer that as an option so we'll find a way an exchange or or what you can pay um especially for for the community 
Yes, yes, thank you. Okay, so we have um, Marian Luna Vila. I hope I said that right, saying, do you have tips to lucid dream, a practice during the day to lucid dream? Mm. Got some questions. We talked about if we were gonna review lucid dreaming. Right. Um, let me talk about, about okay. lucid dreaming is a box that if we open, might get, might get big, <laughs> but I, I will give this one tip, which is one of the most powerful forms of lucid dream or of recognizing that you're dreaming and to awaken in it is what's called reality checks during the day. So you become hyper aware of what the human reality is, the differences between what you experience in your dream. But really in order to do that, the first thing you need to work on is actually dream recall, which is what we're getting to next, which is how to remember your dreams. Like that's the first step before getting into the process of like being aware that you're in the dream world, which is really just understanding the flavor of what the dream world looks like and feels like, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and for the Rivano, <laughs> Johnny Zanini, who said, we'll never need interpretation because I never remember mine, assuming I do dream at all. Everyone dreams. And what we're going into next is how to remember your dream. And so I can, I can guarantee that if you dedicate yourself, you choose intentionally, like, this is something I want to, I want to master in my life. Um, and you give yourself one month. Normally they say it takes 40 days. It's a sacred number also. So let's say 40 days. 40 days of any practice for it to actually begin to like groove an alley in your neural pathways. So dedicate yourself 40 days to trying some of these dream recall practices and you'll see, you will remember one or two or three dreams and you may remember one word, but that doesn't, it, it's like one word becomes one sentence becomes the entire storyline. <laughs> Right, right. That's really good. Um, question from Sade. Hey, Sade. She says, how does daydreaming affect manifestations, if at all? The same as subconscious when sleeping? Yeah. So, no, not the same as subconscious, but very, very, very important and powerful tool in manifestation is visualization, which is essentially daydreaming the ideal reality for yourself. Um, the only anecdote I would put there is that sometimes we daydream or want to manifest or go in a direction that may not actually be where our happiness lies and spirit may try to keep redirecting us and we don't, we don't, <laughs> we don't. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so I would just be open to then continuing to listen if the spirit world is with you because again, it's a collaborative co-creation. So part of this is the empowerment going in the direction that we are that is that we feel our happiness lies and then also listening for is the rest of the world with me in this is spirit mm. you know accompanying me in what i think is the path of my happiness mm. that's really good okay let's talk about dream recall um before we go because we want you guys to have the tools to remember your dreams and this is of course about using your dreams unlocking the dream world for your personal evolution. So Ebian, if you can go into a couple practices that people can instill so that when they go to dream tonight on this Scorpio full moon, ugh, how delicious. I have a, I'm a Scorpio moon and a Scorpio rising. So I'm like feeling all the magic. But yes, when you go to sleep on your Scorpio full moon, um, some tips that you have. Go. I'm feeling all the magic, but I haven't been able to sleep like the past two nights well at all. So intense. It's so intense. So, okay. The first one is creating a space of stillness around bedtime. What does that look like? One of the most important things is to not have, um, like to not watch a movie right before, to not have too much blue light, like very tangible thing. Blue light is what comes from your phone, what comes from your computers. Um, and generally like action movement is, is the opposite of what you need because your brain needs to go and drop into the different like brainwave basically levels to reach the dream world. And the more relaxed you enter the dream, dream state, the more relaxed you exit the dream state, 
the easier it is for you to remember. The second thing is intention. It's the most important thing. And, and I, I don't just mean it like right now we say, I want to remember my dreams. I mean, intentionality in the sense of when you go to bed at night, you, you literally, as you close, you make it your intention to remember your dream. Mm. This telling, one, it's telling like yourself and spirit that you are, you are giving this part of your life and your consciousness importance. And you are like almost asking it, let's go hand in hand together. There's language that is, that is uh, important here for people who have worked with affirmations. It is more effective to say, I will remember my dreams upon waking than this to say, I want or I desire to. Um, this is part of like the law of attraction and the way the brain works. So you trick the brain to thinking that you just already are or I am. <laughs> I remember my dreams when I wake. Um, so that's one, that's one very important step is as you close your eyes, setting that intention to remember your dreams as you wake. And the third and very, very, very important one, if you want to remember like the details and really get into juiciness of your dreams is a dream journal. So a telephone and a computer, I mean, a telephone as your notes is like the last, it's like the last option. <laughs> but all of us, you want to write, you know, yeah, like if that's if that's what you are gonna what you can do, and you're not gonna like turn on the the little night light and write in your journal, fine. Use your phone and, and notes in your phone. However, if you can actually write, it's much 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 better. Mm -hmm. So the way a dream journal is most effective is when you wake up in the morning. The first thing you do before you look at your phone, even before you say anything to anyone, and even before you move your body to the left or to the right, if you can, as little as possible, this is what helps. Like, if you move, if you talk, your brain shifts from the, the part of the brain that is used in dreaming to another part, to the part that we begin to use in beta, which is the brain wave of the rest of the day. And it becomes even more difficult to remember. Like, I don't know if, if many people here have had this experience, to remember your dream and literally four minutes later it's just like boom it's gone <laughs> um and this doesn't happen all the time but so you take your dream journal or your phone as kind of easefully as you can and then you just put what you remember as best as you can if you remember i i remember there was a woman with a yellow dress you put i dreamt of a woman with a yellow dress there you know a woman with a yellow dress and you write that you give your dream a title and that's it. And if you do this repetitively, you will notice your dream recall expanding. And just like anything, I want to emphasize the importance of like lifting our, our muscle. It's like, you know, again, we want things to happen right away, but don't, don't, um, don't rob yourself of the beauty of working with dreams just because in one week it hasn't happened easily. Keep yeah. lifting the muscle. And the last, yeah, the last part is something um, comes from Tibetan yoga of the mind, which is as you're dreaming, I mean, sorry, as you're closing your eyes and you're like transitioning, let's say this is human waking state and this is human dream state. As you are transitioning from one into the other with your eyes closed, you speak your intention of I will remember my dreams upon waking, but then you also just try to hold consciousness as you are crossing over there. How do you do this? Mm -hmm. By paying attention and even paying attention to what images start to like come up in the beginning of your sleep. So this is like the most powerful for me. Even if I manage to hold like two seconds of consciousness more than I normally do, I generally remember my dreams or have a really powerful dream that night. And it's also, again, a really powerful mental and spiritual muscle to be building. And so like there are a lot of Tibetan uh, monks actually practice this for their whole lives to hold equal consciousness in the dream state as in the waking state. And that aspect um, of like breathe, focusing on your breath, it's like a meditation into the, the dream world. It's very, very powerful. And the last thing which we talked about actually was when you want to ask a specific question to your dream world or you want to um, like, you, well, one of the reasons dreams matter is because a lot of beautiful inventions and creative downloads can happen from the dream world. So if you want to ask spirit for help in the dream world, one of the ways of doing that is 
this. So holding consciousness as you're crossing, specifically asking for help, guidance, inspiration. So it's like an, a specific intention for why you're dreaming. Um, whether it's a project, whether it's a conflict that you're having and you don't know a way out, whether it's, you know, you're, you're feeling a, a sadness and you want to understand that you want to liberate from a depression. So whatever it is, the intention is you hold that specific intention as you're crossing over. Um, yeah. I love that idea too of even saying, I will remember my dreams because again, you're like speaking to the subconscious you to participate in this co-creation process with conscious you, right? I like that. I like that a lot. Um, okay, so our live is about to cut. I wanted to make sure we got all these questions out before we left. Um, Ebian, for everybody who's on this line, please know this is not only my sister girlfriend forever, um, but she's also one of the greatest teachers of my life. Truly, I truly mean that. And so anyone who's watching, please go to her for her wisdom, her knowledge. Um, she has seen parts of this world that you may never see. She has explored the depths of her souls in ways that many people would be too afraid to venture. And so please, if you are looking for a source to just help you to go deeper, 10 out of 10 would recommend my best friend, Evian Chimba. Um, thank you so much. I bow to you. I love you. Um, if yeah, if there's any last questions, please let us know. Oh, <laughs> if there's anyone else. Oh, look, Joy said, we love you. Amber said, I second this. Um, Sexy Lexi says, thank you. Cherie says, this was amazing. Thank you, guys. Um, Danielle said, this is an incredible live. Um, she said, hold the specific intention as you cross over. Great knowledge. Yeah. Um, thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Evian. Anything else you want to say or, or you think you should add? The only thing that I can, that comes to me is just, I'm really, really happy to be alive in this moment. And I feel the power when we come together to go deep in things like this. And especially when there are more people of color involved in these practices, like it is so necessary guys i know that you know this and i just want to say i'm so grateful that 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 is the case you know it, it's really been one thing that's been missing from a lot of the spiritual um scene in terms of tools that can help us and i'm so so grateful to see so many people on this path of personal and communal evolution yes more to come higher and higher right <laughs> i love Hi. you guys thank yeah. you for tuning in Please tip your teacher, Cash App, Temple of the Wild, please. She just poured so much knowledge into all of us. And I know she donation-based, but I'm saying tip your teacher, okay? <laughs> Thank you, Evian. I love you. Love you guys. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Shay Amber.